Hey you guys, this is Guy Stevens. Let's do another FileMaker uh, video about uh, graphs. Graphs and charts are very handy um, to kind of visually represent some data. So let's go to File and make a new solution. I'm going to call this one Graphs. Great. Okay, so um, I get a bunch of stuff on my screen, uh, which I don't really need. Um, because I called my file graphs, FileMaker is automatically giving me a table called graphs. You can see this if you go to File Manage Database. But I don't want a table called graphs because that doesn't make any sense. Um, it, graphs is not a table. Um, so I'm going to delete this and I'm going to also remove occurrences of these tables in the graph. So delete. Okay, bye. Um, so now what could we kind of make graphs about if we have invoices and that's an interesting thing but for this exercise setting up an all, a whole invoicing situation is maybe a bit complicated but let's do something very simple. Let's say that we want to track our expenses and now that's a good table. I want to just enter my expenses in there and then I want to kind of see a graph of how my expenses are going. So if we make a table called expenses and we double click it we can start entering fields into that table. Now I'm always going to start with an ID field and I'm going to set this to the type of number I did that by on my Mac doing command N. Uh, you can see those shortcuts here. Just set it to the type number and then you have an ID field that is actually a number field. I'm going to double click this one and then I get to my options for my field and I'm going to set this one to auto enter a serial number so that I have a unique number for every single expense. I always do that for every table. I always start with an ID. Now what else do we need to note down for our expenses? Every expense is going to be done on a certain date. So I'm going to make a date field and I'm going to set that field to the type of date. So that is command D. Okay, I want to create this one. So that's kind of good. What else could I have? Now my expense could be of a certain type, like for instance, rent or electricity or food or something like that. And that's going to be a text. So I'm going to do command T to set it to the type of text. Then I have my type field and of course every expense is going to have a certain amount attached to it and that's going to be a number so that's command N for a number. Okay this is not bad let's see at what we've got. When we close this one we see nothing of course because we are still in our layout of graphs which is a table that I deleted so I'm going to go to file manage layouts and I'm going to delete my graphs layout because I don't really need that. You can also see that th this one doesn't even have an associated table anymore because that table is gone. That's kind of a thing that always happens in the beginning with FileMaker. It's not really a problem but it's fine. Um, so in the layout expenses You've already got some uh, f your all your fields on this layout, so I won't need the field picker right now. But what I always like to do first is I like to um, put the first uh, the kind of table that I make. I always like to put that in table view so that I can get all my data and I can see it without my data being obscured by uh, layout objects like checkboxes, drop downs, and stuff like that. But I do need a layout as well, so I do have to go back for a second to form view. I'm going to go into edit layout and I'm going to create a new layout. So for my expenses, I'm going to make a layout and I'm going to call this lay expenses. This is going to be for my computer and this can be in form view and I'm going to finish this and this one gives me a lay expenses, which is empty. So I do need to bring my field picker back for this. My field picker is under view, so I can select all of my fields by hitting command A and then I can just drag them up here and they show up very nice. Now this is actually the same thing as what I just had before, um, except that on this layout what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn some of these fields, I'm going to give them some kind of layout um, changes. Uh, like a date field, it's very unhandy to like manually enter a date because you could get the formatting wrong. So I'm going to turn this one into a drop down calendar and I'm going to include an icon to show and hide the calendar. Um, the ID is actually one that I don't really need, so I could get rid of that one. Um, let's just nah, let's get rid of it. We can see it in the other layout. So then I've got my type. Now I'm going to be um, entering a lot of expenses and the type is going to be often the same. And I would actually like this to be entered correctly because if I spell it all different, uh, differently in different times, then my report is not going to look good. I'm going to have different types that are actually the same type. So uh, in order for my data to be correct in here, I'm going to make this a drop down list. 
but I want to be as flexible as possible so I don't want to restrict the data entry here to just like a fixed uh, set of um, let's call this list expenses I don't want to create like a fixed list because what if I have something of a different type and then I'm going to be stuck and I don't like to be stuck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, uh, use the values from a field from my expenses table. I'm going to use the type field, which is the field that we're going to put this drop down on. And that means that it can in the drop down, it will show all the values that exist in the type field. And every time I add a new type, it will also show up in the drop down. So that's genius. Okay, 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 so uh, then the amount is gonna be a, a like a value, so I'm gonna hit these two, two A's here to get my formatting bar, and I'm gonna align this to the right. Then I'm gonna go under data, I'm gonna go under data formatting, I'm gonna set this to a currency, and because I'm in the European side of the world, I'm gonna set this to a euro. If it's a negative, it can be red. I'm gonna use a thousand separator, and I'm gonna get a fixed number of decimals. That's a lot of settings. And then when I'm done, I can just create a new record. My date can just be entered very simply like that. My type could be like rent. And then my amount could be something like a 250, for instance. Now, if I make a new record and I set like a new date, maybe last month, I also had rent. And you can see the drop down already shows up and it gives me rent. And I can again enter an amount. Now, if I would like to enter a different kind of value, which is like not rent, I can simply click in here and say electricity, for instance, and I could set an amount. And now the next time I want to enter a value, um, I've got my drop down has been updated to add this new field. Okay, this is cool. So now I've got my layout expenses and I got my expenses here as well. And if we go in here and we set this one back to table view, then I can very cleanly see all my data. This is cool. And I've got my layout for my data entry. All right, so I've got my layouts. And now let's have a little think about how I could make a graph. So the easiest way to make a graph is we just go to edit layout. And then we have this graph tool here. We're just going to make a big box here for the graph. And then this new chart setup thing shows up. So let's go into chart first. And let's make it a title. Or let's choose what a kind of a... Uh, ch the chart we're gonna make now I can see a pie chart here that's kind of cool because I had different types and maybe I can show a pie chart per type so that's cool expenses per type that's kind of cool all right so um, then what are my labels going to be and what is my data going to be so my labels are going to be my type so that's kind of cool I can just click here I can specify a field name and then the field name is going to be the type. Cool. Because I will have things like electricity and rent and stuff like that. Now the data is going to be um, the actual value. So I'm going to specify a field name for that as well. And that's going to be the amount. So that's cool. And I can see that my pie chart is already showing up. That's kind of cool. I'm going to show the legend. So here it says rent, rent, electricity, electricity yeah, that's kind of weird and I've got four parts here that's kind of strange I got to figure out what's going on there later I can show my values on the chart that's kind of cool I can show percentages it's even cooler because I don't have those anywhere and now they've just shown up and then I could say like my percentages they could have like for instance zero decimals because I just need to see the percent and I can actually show the actual values as well and I can make those like a number I can make those a currency, I could give those a fixed amount of decimals, a thousand separator, and I could even give them a notation with euros so that, I, you made, so that it's very clear what you're seeing here. Okay, so um, I can look into the styles here. Now these colors are kind of cool, um, but if you want you can go into all kinds of other uh, color settings as well like for instance the primary basic is a bit it stands out a bit more the colors are a bit more um, flashy if you will okay so here we don't really need to do anything and so we're going to say that we are done here but if we look at our layout it looks kind of weird because we've got rent rent electricity electricity that's kind of strange i would like to get the rent together and the electricity together as well and um, if we go into our expenses, what we can see right now is that we have rent, rent, electricity, electricity. Um, but the thing is that you need to know and remember about a graph 
is that it's uh, dependent on the found set but also dependent on the sort. So if I would do find and I would say find me electricity, perform find, then it's going to find me electricity. So I found two records out of four. And if I go into my layout here, I can see that I've only found t these two now. Uh, so the found set is important. It's only showing you the found set. But now I've still got these two different electricity uh, things. So the second thing that's important with the graph is the sort. So let's sort and let's actually sort by type. And if we do that, then all of a sudden the electricity turns into one thing. And if I do show all, it's kind of ruined again. But then if I sort again by type, then we can see that now my rent is showing up. Um, all, all of my rent is together and all of my electricity is together in one uh, thing as well. So like before, I have electricity, electricity and rent, rent. But now this thing has been sorted. So um, all these values are kind of... Um, together with each other and because of that sort now my graph is looking kind of good now if I'm doing data entry in this uh, layout um, I might not always have this sorted by um, by type so it might be a little bit annoying to have to sort this by type I might want to sort this by date and if I sort this by date this is not gonna work anymore but if you want this type of chart on your layout anyway, that is always sorted correctly, we can do that a different way. So what we could do is we could go to File, Manage, Database, and if we look here, we could uh, make a new table occurrence of this table. Let's say that I make this red, and I click these two pluses here, then all of a sudden, I've got a second table occurrence of expenses um, and you might think now why are we going to make two tables well we don't have two tables we actually just have one table expenses and but it has two occurrences and the two occurrences are pretty cool because what I can do now is I could say expenses graph and I can use this table occurrence which contains all the same data as this one does but I can just like force it to sort a certain way now um, let's say that I want to see all the data of my expenses in my graph so I'm gonna make it I have to make some kind of relationship between these two in order to show this graph what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relate the ID with the ID but I'm gonna set this one to the X join which is like a Cartesian join which means that any record that I am on in my expenses layout will display all the records in my related table so that's kind of cool I can see all my expenses through here and an extra thing that I can do is I was actually just there I can also sort my records so I can force them to be sorted by type and now no matter how I sort or unsort these records I could now sort them for instance by date and if I sort them by date, then uh, this thing is not working because if I go into my table here, see, it's going to say electricity, rent, electricity, rent. It's no longer sorted by type. So my um, this for this layout, that is kind of logical um, to have them sorted by date, but that may, that kind of breaks my graph. But what I can do now is I can just change my graph. And I could say that um, I don't want to see stuff from the expenses type but I want to see something from expenses graph type there you go and I would like to have my data also from that other table occurrence great and then I'm gonna leave all of these settings the same and I'm gonna to go to data source and I'm gonna say that the data is from uh, the related records and uh, the related table is gonna be expenses graph cool and this one says unsorted, but I would like to maybe specify the sort here as well. So I'm going to sort by type. Great. And then I've kind of got the same data. But right now it doesn't matter how I sort this stuff. This is always going to work. So if I add a new record and I say, for instance, the date could be here somewhere in June. And I'm going to add something new like food. And I'm going to say 75 and this just adds itself to my graph and this way my graph is going to update um, all the time and it's going to show me the correct values so these are already immediately two different ways to create graphs 
just from the table that you're in or from a related table. And um, if you do this um, from a related table, that's kind of handy if you want to make a dashboard style uh, type of graph on your layout. Now, this is not the way that I usually make graphs. I will usually make my graphs a little bit differently. I usually put them on a different layout. Now, this is a cool little pie graph, but what if I want to uh, kind of um, uh, compare my expenses on like a month by month basis? Then I would have to make a different kind of graph. And I'm also not going to make it here. I'm going to make that in a different layout. Now, if we want to do this, and let's go back to this one. Let's say I want to know my expenses per month. Now I have my date, so this is in the fourth month, this is in the fifth month, and this is in the sixth month. Um, if I want to separate this stuff by month, then I'll have to be able to sort by month because my sorting is very important. Now how can I sort my date per month? I really can't. So if I want to do that, I'm going to have to take the month out of my date and put it in a separate field. We can simply do that. It's not very hard. Let's go to File Manage Database and let's add a few fields. So the fields we're going to need is um, we're going to need some sort of a month field. So I'm going to do C underscore month. And then I'm going to make this a um, well, you could think you could say that this is going to be a calculation. But a calculation is something that you, um, if you make a calculation, that's something that FileMaker will have to calculate. And calculating stuff costs uh, like processor power. And when I don't have to use a calculation, I really try not to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the month, but we're going to calculate the month from a field within this table. And when we're doing a calculation from a field within this table, we really don't have to make that a calculation. We can just really say, um, what is this going to result in? This is going to give me a month, maybe a name or a number. And um, if I um, want to have that as a number, then I can just make this a number field. I can create this and I can just say, give me an auto enter calculated value. And the cool thing about that is, is that you just, you just have a number field. Um, if we say, for instance, under, in the, as the calculation, we say, give me the month. And then it gives you this, uh, like this example of existing, like, uh, calculations you can use and this one month returns a number from 1 to 12 representing the month of the year in which a date occurs so I'm gonna hit tab to use that one and it says um, if you want to use this function then you have to say that the month is uh, calculated of a certain date and the date is of course my date field so I'm gonna use that one I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna uncheck this box and what that does is if I have a, a date entered in here and I change that date, then this calculation will be updated and it will get like a different kind of month entered in here. That's what unchecking this value does. Otherwise, if you leave this checked, it will get a month. As soon as you enter a date, a month will show up in here. And then if you change the date, the month will not be changed. And I don't want that. And the cool thing about making this a number field with an auto enter calculation is that you simply have a number field with a simple value in there. And that can be used as in relationships and stuff like that. Whereas if you would make this a calculation field, you might not be able to use that as the basis for a relationship. Now, um, if you update your date, this will be um, recalculated as well. So it's as good as a calculation field. It's just something that's not going to require any um, like constant calculations or something like that. Um, so this is going to be really cool. There is one downside to this, though. If I make this one and I modify plus add this to my um, layout here, you will see that this one doesn't have any value. If I go to my expenses layout and I add the field here, we can see this a little bit more easily. If I add my month name here, this doesn't contain a value. And the reason is that it, this is a calculation, but is, it's an auto enter calculation. So if I would make a new record and I would enter a date here, then my month would be calculated. For an existing record, what I would have to do to update this is I would have to like re-enter the date. And as soon as I re-enter the date, this calculation gets updated. Now, this is very annoying if you already have a bunch of records, but you can very simply update the values in these fields by going to records, 
replace field contents and then you just make a calculation and the calculation is the same one we just did month of this date and if you do that you're going to be updating all the records or uh, the field for all of the records so if you replace then i get my month value for every single record now if i ever um uh, change and you can't see it because it's a bit too uh, gets covered by that drop down if I change my month so this is 14.4 if I change it to 14.3 for instance then my month field here updates as well so that's really cool really clean and um, it's a good way to do these kind of calculations that stay within the table great so now I have my month number and that's a good one to sort because I can sort by month number, I can't sort by the month name because the month name is not really going to be alphabetically sorted correctly. So, but I do need to have that month name just to show it somewhere. So I'm going to go to File Manage Database and I'm going to add one that is called C month name, and that's going to result in a text. So I'm going to Command T to turn the type to text, and I'm going to create this one. Again, it's going to be an alt an auto enter calculated value, and I'm going to say month. But now I'm going to use month name instead of month. And if we click on month name, we see that it returns the full name of the month for a date. So that's kind of cool. Month name of the date. The date is, of course, my date field. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to uncheck this box. Great, so if we add this one, then we will see that we have the same problem as we had before. Nothing shows up now. I'm going to show you if this would be a calculation field. I'm going to change this. I'm going to hit OK. And this is the calculation that I'm going to use. So I'm going to hit OK. If I make this a calculation field, all these uh, months, they will just show up without a problem. Uh, so that is uh, might look a little bit easier, but then you're stuck with a calculation that's going to constantly be calculating, which is not really something I would want. Um, it takes up processing time and um, it makes all my database slower. So I'm going to change this back to a text and I'm going to say auto enter a calculated value. Cool, cool, cool. And then... Um, actually now they are still in there so that's kind of handy if they're not if they're empty then you kind of have to um, use that records replace field contents uh, step again to fill in these correct values okay so I have a month I have a month name what else do I need I'm gonna need a year as well because what if I I can have a bunch of different months in this year but if I have multiple years then I'm gonna need that year as well so let's um, make this a number field and let's create this and this is very simple an auto enter calculation that says year and I'm gonna tab to select that one and it's gonna calculate the year of my date as well hit OK uncheck this box and then OK again uh, if we add this one then um, we have to fill in the year as well so now we have two ways either replace field contents or turn it into a calculation and then back again we're not going to do that we're just going to do replace field contents and the smartest thing of course always is to create these fields before you start entering data that way you don't have to do this um, yep let's replace and this is all in 2016 because now if I make a new record and let's say I enter let's say 12 12 2015 if I tap now all of these fields because they are auto enter calculations they will all auto enter automatically and now I don't have to worry about uh, putting the values in there so it's always the best if you think ahead while making your table and you just um, create these fields beforehand all right, so I've entered some made up uh, expenses and let's go ahead and make some reports. Like I said before, I usually like to make them on a separate layout. So I'm going to go edit layout, make a new layout. It's going to be based on expenses. That's good. Let's say the layout name is going to be, I'm going to make a report and I'm going to call this graph. And let's say I want to see stuff by the month. I'm gonna go to my computer I'm gonna make this I'll just make this a form it's fine and then I'm gonna just put a big graph on here like this this looks kind of good okay let's get into our chart and let's try and figure this out 
Um, what are we going to do? A column, yep. We're going to say that on the horizontal axis, which is this one, the X, we're going to see, what are we going to see? The month. Um, okay, let's go and specify the field name. That's going to be the month name. And then the data. Um, uh, uh, uh. Oh no, the data is going to be month name, but the title is going to be just like month. Okay, so now it shows up. That's kind of good. I've got all my months down here. They still look a little funky, but you can probably already guess why that is. I'm going to give you a hint. It's not yet sorted. Um, then on my vertical axis, I'm going to have my money. Uh, so expenses or expense total. And the data is kind of come from my field amount. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, but that looks really weird. Um, okay, cool. Um, what are we going to do? Show data points on the chart? Yeah, we could do that, I guess. Um, then we could give our labels an angle so that um, they stand a little bit like shifted so they don't kind of hit each other. That looks kind of cool. I guess yeah fine okay so this looks good but it looks like there is still some funky stuff going on um, we can go into our styles maybe select another uh, kind of color set okay um, some stuff I need to deal with like first of all chart title um, expense oops per month yeah that's kind of good um, let's go and have a look at our chart. Okay, so I've got my expenses per month, but I've got a lot of these like month names that show up uh, all the time. So that's kind of kind of weird. But if we remember, we need to do some sorting. So I'm going to not sort this by date anymore. And I'm going to go to my current table of expenses and I'm going to say sort by the month. I have to take the month number because I can't sort by month name because then it's going to sort alphabetically and that's going to be weird. Okay, if I do that, this already looks a lot better. It's sorted correctly by um, uh, by the month number, and so the months are showing up in the correct kind of um, order. But there are still a few problems. Like these numbers, they don't really look correct. And the reason for that is um, I'm just using the... Let's go here. I'm just using this uh, value here. But the values, if I have like multiple different things in the same month, they need to be added up and that's not happening yet. I need to add a new field for that. So I'm going to do file manage database and a field like that is called a summary field. So I'm going to select this amount field so that the name shows up. Then I'm going to say s underscore sum underscore amount and I'm going to turn this into a summary field. So if I create that one. It's going to ask me, what do you want this to show? You can show the total, the average and whatever, but I want to show the total of the amount. Okay, cool. If we add this one to our as some amount, if we add this one to our layout, then what we're going to see is it's kind of weird because it's showing me the total of everything and that's kind of strange but it actually isn't because if I do a find and I say for instance the type rent then all of a sudden that total changes and it shows me only the total of the records I'm looking at. So that means that this summary field is kind of um, dependent on your found set that you're looking at, but it's also dependent on the sort. And we're going to find that out um, right now. If I go in here and I'm going to double click this and I'm going to change my amount by my S summary amount. Okay, and I'm going to hit done. This is looking a little bit different already. It's got the same amount every month. Let's go and look at our sort. I'm going to sort by the month number here. OK, let's sort. And so I'm getting the same value for every month. And the reason for that is that I'm still in my found set. So I'm going to show all and I'm going to sort again by month. And now as it kind of updates, you can see that for every month, we're going to get the total of all the expenses in that month. OK, so that's kind of cool. Um, but if you are paying attention, then you probably notice that we have another problem. We've got our month of December here, 
but actually we're going from January all the way up to June and this December is actually from last year so there are two things that I can do right now um, either I make this December kind of go all the way to the front um, and then I show multiple years in one graph or what I could do is I can make a separate graph per year if I want to do um, this kind of um, uh, the December in the front I have to think ahead I have to think about my sort order because it's now being sorted by month but let's see what happens if I sort by year as well let's sort by year first okay if I do that uh, that looks kinda weird that looks like it doesn't really work um, so what I need to do in order to make this work I would have to make some sort of a new field uh, like a field where I combine the year and the month now we um, let's make this a number field we know how to do this because we've kind of done this before somewhat and what we could do is we could say give me the C year and give me like a little space in between a space with a dash and give me the month um, like this then if we do that of course this um, I'm gonna uncheck this one I'm gonna copy this calculation because I'm gonna need to replace the field contents in all of my fields there but what I can do like that is I can create a new field that is one single field that contains both the um, let's replace the field contents with my copied calculation one field that contains both the year and the month so if I hit OK and replace here then what I'm gonna get is 2015-12 and 2016-1 and now I can sort on this one and then it's immediately gonna sort both by year and by month and if we go back to my graph here and I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna say that I would like to see as my month I might want to see my new field okay so it's gonna show both the year and the month that's kinda cool and then I can just go in here and then I can sort by this new field I just made okay now let's sort this the other way around what is this gonna look like yeah it looks kinda weird because now it's got my 2015 here but these guys are kind of backwards that's kind of mm, not ideal and now my 2015 is there so that's not handy either uh, uh, uh. yeah I know why this is because because this one should have like a zero in front of it and then it's gonna sort because this one has two numbers and this one is one okay so in order to fix that I need to go back to my calculation and change it so that this one actually also um, adds a zero in front of it um, the way to do that is you do uh, a function I'm gonna just start and put this here right so we're going to put the text of zero and C month. I'm going to cut this and paste this here. And I'm going to take two characters. So I'm going to do zero and the month. And I'm going to take two characters from the right. So what I'm going to have is if my month is one, then I'm going to have zero and one. And I'm going to take two characters to the right if my uh, month is 0 12 then I'm gonna also take two characters from the right and I will end up with 12 so no matter what I have I will always have like kind of the correct number of digits so I'm gonna copy this because I have to redo um, this one I'm gonna replace the field contents and use my new calculation great so now I've got two digits for the month name and that's going to be better so let's go back to my graph here let's sort uh, this one ascending 
Okay, so I've got my 2015-12 here, and I've got my 2016, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so they are in the correct order now. Okay, this is one way of doing it, but it's actually not my favorite way of doing it, because the annoying thing right now is, if you have a whole year, then you will have 12 bars in here. And if you add a second year, you will have like uh, twice as many bars in here. That's like 24 bars in one graph. And that's sometimes maybe a little bit much. Um, what I like to do is I like to uh, make a separate graph per year. And that's actually very easy to do. If we go into edit layout, we will see that we're working in the body part now. But if we double click the body part, we can say that this doesn't have to be a body part, but a sub summary part when sorted by year. Okay, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to say print above. It doesn't really matter. But if I do that and I sort um, per year, like per year and then per month number, and I'm going to sort this one so like so, then what I get is, uh, whoops, let's go here. Then I get, well, nothing because I'm sitting in my form view and I need to be in list view. So let's edit the layout. Let's go in here, let's go to the views and let's say that I want this layout also to be available in list view and I don't really want this in form view because then I'm not going to see my uh, multiple graphs here. And now as you can see, this is uh, my uh, December in 2015 and this is my um, 2016. So I'm going to go in my graph again and make a few changes. For instance, um, I want to see simply my month name. So I'm going to uh, change this again so that my names are showing up here. That's better. And then in the title, I'm going to say expenses per month. And I'm going to go specify a calculation here because I want to add here the current year. Great. And if I see I do that, I get expenses per month 2016. That's kind of cool. Um, so that was one thing. Actually, these are two things we've changed. So expenses per month for 2016. I could maybe have added a dash in here. And then you can see the months of 2016. And here is one month for 2015. So um, this is kind of cool. And what may, would make this even cooler is if I would be able to print this and I would have one graph per page. Now, I'll just quickly go in here and I will just add maybe another expense for, let's say, um, 13, 11, 2015. Let's say um, clothing, and the amount is, let's say, 300. And if we do that, then we could go back to our report and we will see that this just nicely updates our graph as well. Okay, so now we have one graph per year, which is really cool. Um, and what we could do now is make that stuff printable. Let's go into our edit layout and let's make a button. Whoops, that's a bit big. And uh, let's say print. And if we want, we can even just add a nice little printer there. That looks nice. Okay, cool. We have a print button. And the thing is, this layout uh, looks good on our screen because it fits nicely. But if we go into preview mode, we will see that this layout totally does not fit on my page. Even if I go into page setup and I set it like this to landscape, it still doesn't entirely fit. And I never want to change my screen layout to fit my print layout. So what I'm always going to do is I'm going to go to file manage layout. And I'm going to duplicate this layout to make a separate print layout. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this one print. Great. So I've got report graph month and report graph month underscore print. That's great. And I'm going to go to this print layout. And I'm going to first of all get rid of this print button because I don't want that on my print layout. Then I'm going to change my theme because I've got this big black box. And if I'm going to print a big black box, it's going to use a, bit, a lot of ink. So I'm going to use my basic minimalist theme for this. And that's all white. And then what I'm going to do is I don't want a header for this. I'm going to delete this one. I don't want a footer. So I'm going to delete that one as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to view my page breaks. 
and this will show me um, if I go into preview page setup I can put this on landscape cool okay so this will show me the page breaks for my landscape which is cool and then I can just make my box a lot smaller and I think this is gonna be higher so let's make this okay like so this is the line where my page ends so I'm gonna make the body a little bit smaller than that and then I can just fit my graph on here something like this and you will see that this is higher than it is on my screen but it doesn't really matter this is gonna print nicely on a page okay if I preview this then this looks it fits perfectly on my page and if I kind of browse here then you will see that I have a different graph per printed page cool so I have my um, report I have my print button I just need to make a print script to be able to actually use that print button so let's make a new script and let's say print report let's say go to layout and I could just specify this layout but if I'm gonna make um, more different kinds of graphs I could also specify a calculation so that um, this script can be reused by different um, by different uh, uh, graphs so I'm gonna say get layout name and then I'm gonna add the value underscore print because that's basically the uh, part that I added to my layout name for the print layout so get layout name and underscore print so go to that layout then I'm gonna do print setup because I wanna perform this without a dialog I wanna set this up so that it definitely prints in landscape and then I'm gonna do a print simple print and then after that I'm gonna go to layout original layout okay cool so I could add a freeze window at uh, the top but I don't know if that's gonna work because I think it's gonna unfreeze as soon as this uh, dialog comes up okay so freeze my window go to this layout print setup and all of that okay let's do a save for this let's close this and let's attach this whole thing to the button let's perform a script print report okay my options I always want to set this to give it a hand cursor because then I can really see that that's a button and I'm gonna set this one here uh, no not there that's not good okay there so if I hit my print I will go to this other layout actually my freeze screen does seem to work because it's staying like this I get the print and I'm gonna continue my script and then I end up back here so I didn't actually print it right now but this would then normally just print what I'm seeing here in like a print friendly version alright so this is really awesome but um, maybe sometimes when you're like a business you don't want to put uh, stuff per uh, month but maybe when you're a business you're gonna uh, work with quarters and that's a possibility as well we could just go to file manage database and add a quarter field which is gonna be a number field and I'm again gonna make this an auto enter calculation and the way that we could um, calculate a quarter is by just dividing the month by three so let's do a month uh, the month from the date and we're gonna divide this by three and if we do that let's see what that gives us I'm gonna uncheck this one I'm gonna say okay let's just copy this let's you know what let's make this a calculation just for a second so we can test this out if it's really working I'm gonna save the changes okay okay and I'm gonna just add this here to see if it's really uh, working very well or not okay so this is giving me a number but it's giving me kind of a funky number and it's kind of like almost correct so December is effectively the fourth quarter but then November is also still in the fourth quarter but it's giving me 3.666 so what I need to do is I need to round these guys up so I'm gonna uh, change my calculation and I'm gonna say give me the ceiling and that returns a number rounded up to the next integer and I'm gonna give me uh, this whole thing so I'm gonna Control X this, Control V this in here, 
So this one, if I change this calculation, this is going to say that January and February and March are all in the first quarter. And then April is the second quarter, all of these up to June. And I don't have anything in the third quarter, but then the November, December is in the fourth quarter. So that's kind of cool. That looks like it's working. I'm do, I am going to go and change this one, though. I don't want this to be a calculation. I want this to be a number field, very simple and clean with a auto enter calculation. And the cool thing is if you've already set this up in the calculation, then that one already shows up and I'm going to leave this one. And that's kind of cool. OK, so about my graph. I was going to have like 12 months in here and that's why I separated them by year. But maybe if I'm going to do a report based on the quarters, I only have four quarters in a year. I might want to show like multiple quarters of multiple years all in one and the same graph because that gives me a nice overview. So in order to do that, I need to do that trick that I did before when I combined the year and the month. But now I'm going to combine the year and the quarter. So I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to say C year and quarter. Wow, that's completely wrong twice in a row. OK, quarter. And this is going to be a number. So I'm going to uh, like change this. I'm going to go and have a look in here. So I'm going to do the year. That's good. I'm going to add this one and I'll just put a Q here. And then I'm going to write up zero and C month is going to change into quarter. Actually, I don't need to do this because the quarter will always just be one, two, three or four. So I don't need to do this whole thing. This could just simply be the quarter. So I'm going to have the year and then I'm going to have a Q and then I'm going to have quarter. Okay, I'm going to copy this so I can do my replace field contents with this. And if we add this one to our layout, C year quarter, can make a few of these a little smaller so that this all shows up in my screen here. Okay, my C year quarter, I'm going to do records, replace field contents, make that calculation, paste it in here. Okay, replace this. So that gives me like a 2016 Q1, Q2, and so forth. So that's kind of cool. And actually, I can try sorting these to see if that actually works. So let's sort these ascending. Yep, I've got 2015 Q4 and then this goes like that. Very cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy both of these to make a new graph. And because I'm copying this print one as well, and I'm going to change the name that for my print script on this one is going to work on that on the other copied one as well. Let's go to File, Manage Layouts. Let's just duplicate these two. I'm going to say Report Graph Quarter. And then I'm going to copy this name. And I'm going to say Report Graph Quarter Print. And this one needs to go. OK, cool. So if I go to Report Graph Quarter, and then I'm going to have to go in here in order to fix this. Um, this one doesn't have to be per year anymore, so I'm just going to go back to make this a simple body part. And I'm going to change this one here because I'm going to say per quarter. And I'm going to make one layout. So I'm not going to do this per year. I'm just going to make one. This is expenses per quarter. That's good. Instead of showing the month, I'm going to show the quarter. And then I'm going to choose a different field for that. I'm going to use that C year quarter field. And if we see here, then we can kind of already see it showing up. That's kind of good. Uh, this is going to stay the same. OK, I think the rest is going to be kind of similar as well. Let's say that we're done. Let's have a look at this. Um, I want to sort this maybe again. Um, by the C year quarter. Let's have a look. Well, this isn't entirely correct yet. Oh, no, it actually is. We've only got one, two, three quarters. I'm going to put this one back in, uh, not in list view, but in form view. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. We only have three quarters. So this is kind of a boring graph right now. But imagine if you have multiple years and multiple quarters to compare, then that is kind of more interesting. So I've quickly added a, a bit of data in different quarters so you could see um, that now I've got like uh, quarter three of 2015 showing up here and now we could kind of compare it with quarter three of this year. So you can see that this is higher than this one. You can compare the quarter four with quarter four of this year and that way you can kind of in one graph compare uh, different quarter quarters in multiple years to each other. So that's kind of handy um, to get this kind of like overview in a single graph. Now, if you don't like this kind of overview, you can also just um, use a different kind, like for instance, a line. We have a line here, and then you can make these, for instance, a curve fitting line. And then you would have a different looking kind of graph that kind of shows you an overview of how your expenses are going um, on a, like a quarter by quarter basis. Now, if we would like this one to print correctly as well, we can use that same button with that same script because it's just gonna go to the um, layout that has the same name, but just adds uh, underscore print to it. But we do have to make sure that we double check this one. And right now it's not really looking very good because this one is still in a sub summary part, which can be like a body part. I'm gonna set this one also to uh, view form view and not list view. And then I'm gonna change this one. I'm just gonna delete this one. I'm gonna go back, copy this one over and go back to this layout to paste this one in so that I have my correct graph showing up in here. Let's see, yeah, somewhat like this. Uh, it's probably best to get like the correct, to, to get all the graphs in like the same size. So if you kind of go to this graph, you can go into position and just kind of note down, uh, the centimeters is not handy, but points is handy. You can just kind of note down the sizes that you have here and then just set them in to uh, apply them to this one as well. Um, so that your graphs are kind of the exact same size uh, and that will be cool. All right, now, um, what else can we do with graphs? We've got this graph by quarter, and you have noticed by now that these graphs are very much dependent on the sort. So if we go into this graph now, it doesn't really look very good because it's not sorted correctly. So I now have to sort this one by like, um, uh, what was this one? Was this one year and then month? I'm not even sure anymore. Let's sort. Yeah, this looks kind of good, but I want this year to be like this. Yep, that looks uh, better, but now my values aren't good. So I'm going to show all the values and I'm going to sort again. Yeah, okay, so this is looking better. So that's kind of annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my script workspace and I'm going to make a few uh, scripts that bring me to these reports and that automatically do the sorting correctly as well. So I'm going to say go to month report and I'm going to say go to layout and the layout I'm going to use is going to be my month report there. Oops, I'm going to go to my month report there and then I'm going to say sort records. Now I'm going to set some settings in here. First of all, I don't want to see a dialog then because I'm going to specify the sort order and because I kind of just did the sort order, it's already showing up here. So that's kind of good. I can save this and then that's done. I can just duplicate this one as well to go to my uh, quarter report. And that's going to do a go to layout quarter and that's going to do a different kind of sort if I remember correctly. It should be something like this. Okay, cool. Let's save these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a button here as well. That's like a back button that brings me back to my expenses. And that's going to just do a single step, which is going to be a go to, to layout, lay expenses. Okay, cool. So that way I have kind of a loop that I can use to kind of go back and forth. So I'm going to set this one on, let's say five and 10. The height is 30, which is great. The width, let's say, give it 100. Okay, cool. So I got my button on 5 and 10. So I'm going to go to this layout 
I'm gonna paste this here, set it on 5 and 10, that's good. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is on my lay expenses, I'm gonna set a few buttons here. In fact, let's paste this one and let's put it somewhere here and let's say uh, report or graph. month and that's gonna do a perform script for me and it's gonna go to my month report great and then I have this one and then let's copy this one over and let's call this one graph quarter and this is gonna go to my whoops let's hit this squiggly thing here go to quarter report great and what I can do now is I can see my month report which is great and it's working now, it's correctly sorted. I can go back to my expenses and I can see my quarter report and this is uh, looking kind of good as well. And I can go back. Okay, that is kind of nice and I told you guys that um, that these graphs are kind of dependent on your sort, which you guys have figured out just now, but it's also kind of dependent on your found set. So I can show you that by adding a search field. That's kind of cool and kind of handy. Let's go into File, Manage Database, and in the Expenses uh, table, let's add a field. Let's make it a global field. I'm going to call that one G underscore, and I'm going to call this one Search, and I'm going to search for the type. Let's say that that would be kind of cool. Um, so let's make that a text field. I'm going to create that one. And because I called it G underscore, it needs to be a global field. So I'm going to set the storage to global storage. And the thing is, when you're making a search field, you kind of need that to be a global field. So I'm going to set this field up top here. And I'm going to say this, uh, I want to, oops, I see that I made a typo. Uh, I'm going to correct that right here. Search type, okay. Let's add that field here and uh, let's say type. I'm going to make this one a bit bigger and I'm going to give this a drop down list. And I already had a drop down for expenses. Um, yep, that's a type of expense. And then I'm going to put that here. And then I'm going to make two buttons here. I'm going to do a find button. And if you want, you can just add like a uh, magnifying glass or something. <clears throat> and then you could maybe give that a different style, like make it green or something. Okay, cool. So I'm going to find this one, but I'm also going to alt drag this guy over here. I would like to also have a reset button that it brings me back to kind of my um, normal state. I'm going to do that and I'll maybe make this one a red or something. Okay, cool. So I've got my field here and I've got a drop down. Let's say that I want to see only um, all my expenses for electricity. Uh, if I'm going to do my find, then I have to make a script for that. So let's make a new script it's called find type. And I have to make a few steps. First step is enter find mode. Um, I'm not going to pause, so I'm going to uncheck this one. And then I'm going to say enter find mode. Then I'm going to say set field. So I'm going to determine exactly what happens in that find mode. That's why I don't have to pause. And I'm going to set the field type with the value of my global search type field. Okay, then I'm going to set error capture on because if nothing is found, I don't want to get an annoying pop up. Then I'm going to perform the find. And then I have to sort again. Um, I'm going to have to sort and I'm going to have to sort um, let's say I'm on the month report I'm going to have to do my sort kind of like this so I can just copy this one and just paste it right here um, but this is kind of annoying because um, 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 um. I, I can do this find both on the month report and on the quarter report. The only difference between those reports is the sort. So what I would like to do is I would like to sort um, differently here. 
on this month report, then I would like to sort on this quarter report. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my search button, I'm going to add a script parameter and I'm going to say if my get, oops, I'm going to say if my get script parameter is equal to month, then I'm going to sort by month. But if I'm going to copy paste this, if my get script parameter is quarter, then I'm going to sort by quarter. So I'm going to remove this one, I'm going to go to this one, I'm going to copy this one, and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, so I'm going to do a find and depending on if I'm in my month or my quarter report, I'm going to do a different kind of sort. So this sort is by quarter, uh, this sort right here is by year and month. Cool, so now how do we determine this script parameter month and quarter? Very simple. If we go into edit layout and we kind of do the button setup for this one and we want this to perform a script, we can uh, determine what script it needs to do and then we can here set an optional script parameter. So this one is per month. That's the script para parameter I'm going to give along on this one. And if I copy this whole thing and bring it to this uh, quarter layout, I'm going to paste it here. Then what I can do is on this button setup, I can say find me the type but use as a script parameter the value quarter and then if I, well I'm gonna make this a button like this and this one is also gonna have a hand cursor then if I search for a certain type here it finds me my uh, electricity and all my electricity is the same value every month let's say food Finds me food, I've only got food in one month, maybe I've got food in the other year, yeah, in the other year, 2015 I have some food, clothing, and so forth. Now, um, if I would do this in my graph per quarter, I've got um, the same stuff going on, I can do rent, for instance, and it shows me all my rent, and it also sorts it correctly, so that's really kind of cool. Now I have to do my reset script, and the reset script is basically going to show me all of my records and then sort them correctly. So basically this is going to be doing the same thing as this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to say um, reset. I'll just call it reset. It's fine. And it's not going to do any of this fine stuff. Is this going to show me all my records? So I'm going to go uh, to the bottom. I'll just say show all records and this needs to happen first. So I'm going to go up to the top, show me all my records. And if it's a month, um, a script parameter and sort by month and otherwise uh, do it that way. I'm going to save my reset button. Then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say perform a script. Reset, this is the quarter layout change this to a cursor great that's cool and then I'm gonna go to my month layout and I'm gonna say you can do the same script but by month great and this is really cool because now um, I can just reset this one or I can find all the rent and then I can reset this one and then if I go to my quarter report I can do the same thing, find and reset, find and reset. Now one thing I could add to my reset script is that it empties that search field so that it doesn't look like I'm still in my... So if I just put two uh, paragraphs with nothing in, or two quotation marks with nothing in between them, then I will get an empty value. Okay, so if I hit reset, then my type field is empty, so I can do find on electricity, I can reset, my val all my records are back, and this field is empty. And that now works on those two layouts, both on the month as well as on the um, as on the quarter. Okay, so this is kind of cool, um, but maybe one problem with that is that um, if you would like for instance make different reports like this then 
if you see this, you don't really know what you're looking at. You don't really know that you're looking at only the expenses of the clothing. So that's a little bit dangerous. But we can do this uh, slightly differently. We can make um, uh, a layout like this, but we can do a graph per type as well. The same as that we've kind of did a graph per year. Um, so what we could do is, and maybe we should do that um, by the quarter, that's going to be easiest. If we make, um, let's go to file manage layout and let's make a copy of these guys. Actually, I'm not going to do the print thing anymore. So let's just duplicate this one. I'm going to do by quarter, but also by type. Okay, that's great. Let's go to that layout. And then what we can do is we can change the body and make that a sub summary when sorted by type. That's kind of cool. Uh, then I do have to change my layout again from uh, to list view because then I'm going to have all the different types. And then I have to change this one as well so that my expenses per quarter kind of does this. And then in my specify calculation, I'm going to say that I need to add the type name here as well. Oops, that's the wrong thing I use there. I need this one. So I want to say expenses per quarter. And uh, then I want to say the what type we're looking at. Now this is looking kind of bad. But I'm pretty sure that that's because we're sorting wrong. So I'm going to sort by um, type first. And then by quarter. So if we sort like this, then what do we get? Expenses per quarter for clothing, for electricity, for food, for rent. And transportation is just one uh, single value. So this is kind of cool because it shows you, um, again, one single graph per type. So this could be very handy as well. If you've got like, for instance, different products and you want to see how much money you've made on every single product per quarter, you could use this kind of uh, setup as well. Now, of course, if you're going to make a new layout or a new report like this with a different kind of sort again, then you do also have to kind of include that into your find and reset script. So like uh, you need to um, have a new sort kind of added to that. And that's going to be like quarter uh, type. Then you will need to do a new sort. And I'm going to delete this one, add a new sort. And let's see what shows up here. So it already gives me the correct sort. So that's good. Just have to remember this one here, the way I've named this. I'm going to copy this to my reset script as well. So I'm going to command S to save, command S to save this one as well. And now I need to take this one here, quarter type, that's my script parameter. And I have to change these buttons here so that um, they got to go to the squirrely one so that this script parameter is correct. And for this button, of course, as well, I'm going to set this one like so. Great. So now if I look for something, clothing, for instance, I'm going to find clothing, but I'm going to only going to find clothing and nothing else. Okay, if I reset, then all of my other charts show up again as well. Now I've done a simple find on the type, but you could also do like a date range find or any other kind of find. All right, so those are all kinds of different kinds of graphs. This comes from a related table. And as you can guess, you can do this uh, in all kinds of different ways because um, we have made a table occurrence, a new table occurrence, and we can just make as many as we want. And we can relate them in all kinds of different ways to the expenses here and then make all kinds of different um, sorts of um, of graphs that we can put up here as like some sort of a dashboard you can show like all the expenses per this type and then your relationship would be based on the type field or you could uh, restrict it to the current year or the current month or whatever you want um, and you can set all kinds of different graphs up here if you want um, you've also seen all these layouts here so um, you could make all kinds of different graphs like this and even sort them by like year and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, 
if you remember all these basics like your found set is important your sort is important your sub summary part is important and like the relationships you make between the different table occurrences is important if you just remember these basics then there is really no limit to what you can do with these graphs there are so many fun ways that you can do uh, that you can use to kind of represent your data in a graphical way so I hope you guys learn a little something and if not then I will read about it in the comments all right thank you ciao if you want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can always go to my Udemy page where I've got a few FileMaker courses that are far more detailed than these short videos that I make on YouTube. For instance, there is a FileMaker beginner tutorial uh, where we make a context database and this one is free so you can follow it wherever you want. And basically in this one we make a simple contacts database which shows you all the basics of how to make layouts and lists and menus etc um, in FileMaker. Then we build on to that one to make a complete FileMaker invoice database which shows you an invoice structure that basically every single company uses. It allows you to make quotes and invoices to track your products and your inventory and it allows you to make all kinds of reports and graphs and stuff like that to track all of your income and stuff like that. And then I've got a FileMaker booking and reservation system which is really cool and shows you a lot of cool tricks and techniques to um, book and reserve items in a company where you do stuff like if you have a hotel or a car or equipment rental or something like that this uh, course is a really interesting one for those kinds of situations so head over there by following the links in the description to learn a ton more about filemaker